Holy glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. Welcome. Another Friday evening. I have a teacher. Amen. Look forward to this. And at this particular time on a Friday. Come to hear thus said the Lord. This time we are going to pray. And we are going to ask the Lord. To be with us. And to guide us through this. The anointing. Amen. Fall upon us. And lead us in paths that we have never been before. Amen. In Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Short prayer. Father, we give thanks unto thee. Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you and we praise you. We adore you, we magnify and we lift up your holy name. Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, our Savior, our Kidman Redeemer. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord of hosts, the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the most high God and the most high. Father, we thank you for this grand and glorious privilege that we can come together again with a desire to hear from you. The desire, Lord Jesus Christ, to be fed, O oh God, knowing that you are the bread of life, that we eat of your flesh and drink of your blood, we know that we do eternal life. Father, we are truly thankful. Thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us through the course of the day. It's a good thing to give thanks unto thee. Go forth your loving kindness in the morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all our lives. You have been faithful, Lord Jesus. So we are truly glad and thankful. You are our God. One true God, the only wise God, the only protecting. And beside you, there is none else. Lord, so we bow down with a humble spirit, looking to thee this night. Lord Jesus, this hour of Bible teaching. Lord Jesus, asking thee, O God Almighty, open our eyes and enlighten us. Lord Jesus, show us the way, O God Almighty, as be Lord Jesus. Yourself, oh God, and to say thank you. Hear us, oh Lord, from the heavens. Lord Jesus, bless us now. We do pray. Remember your children everywhere, oh God Almighty. All those at this time come in the sanctuary, or they are those, oh God, on Zoom. And wherever they are, calling upon your name, we pray a blessing for them, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, as we say, thank you right now. Uh, any unmentioned mercy, Lord, we ask you to understand to us. And to read the word of God. And open our eyes and enlighten our understanding. We know what is the hope of your divine call. We say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And once again, let me say praise the Lord to everyone. Amen. God is a good God. We thank you. Of his goodness, grace, and mercy. Amen. The season that we are in, oh, we are so thankful. Amen. That we remember our God. And so we have been talking about Jesus tonight. Amen and amen. So we are in the book of Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 3. That's where our reading portion is tonight. Um, and we are going to the Lord to lead us into all truth and into all righteousness. So if you turn your Bibles with me over to said Matthew chapter 3 and we are going to exegesis the text. Amen. And see what the Lord is saying. Amen. So not your Bibles. We have got other scriptures to look at. Uh, and in Luke but um, our foundation scripture is St. Matthew chapter 3. And we're going to begin at the, the very first verse. But Jesus, now, amen, he was born. 
And we have to understand our all take, take on a dispensation. Because we've been, over the past few days, we've been looking and we've been reading and teaching, singing about the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth, we know that he is born. He was born. No it's about that. We know he came to this world uh, with an assignment. Jesus has an assignment that he should die for us. He was back to his but he had to come into this world as a baby, legally, as any one of us was born. The thing is, uh, we all were born uh, as Adam descendants. He was not born uh, as one of Adam descendants. Jesus Christ came uh, back to the virgin birth, uh, Mary, virgin birth, when the angel came to her and spoke, and told her that she's on favor with God and, and she shall conceive in a womb and bring forth a man child. And, and when she listened, um, she says, How can this thing be? Since I know not a man. So the angel told her, And how it's going to happen that the Holy Ghost shall come up. Power of the highest shall overshadow you. And you shall. Conceive in, in, in thy womb, thy thy womb, and bring forth a man child and call his name Jesus. So we've been dealing with that over the past few days. Now we're going to move into St. In Matthew chapter 3. I want us to consider a 30 year gap. 30 years. Now, last week we we're dealing with the baby, birth. Now we're going to deal with chapter 3. 30 years on. So there's a dispensation of time in it elapsed. But Jesus now is about to do his ministry. Remember now as a, a priest, uh, and he starts his ministry when he's 30. 30 is the number of ministry. 30. So although Jesus, when he was 12, he went up to Jerusalem with his Pass over time with his mother and um, with Joseph. And while he was there, he was 12 year old. Luke recorded that when he was 12, he was with the doctors and lawyers in Jerusalem. And they left him there. And then they would almost reach home. They remember that they didn't see him, that he was not with them. And they had to go back to Jerusalem. And they found him with doctors and lawyers. And when they saw him, and they spoke to him, he said, how is it that they do not know that it needs to be about his father's business? However, Jesus was 12 at that time, and then he went back with his parents as being subjected unto them, meaning he was still under uh, tutoring from his parents, amen, and Jesus sub subjected himself unto them. Um, but you haven't heard anything more about him from when he was 12. Next time now you're going to hear something about him when he is 30. 30. We're also going to look at uh, the forerunner, which is John the Baptist. That is forerunner. We, he was six months older than Jesus. And they were cousins. Because uh, Elizabeth um, came from the tribe of Levi, and Mary was from the tribe of Judah. All right, so that makes, uh, you know, Jacob's children, Levi and Judah were brothers. Then this is 49, tells us that. And so because they are brothers, um, Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. The angel did confirm that when the angel spoke to Mary and said that your cousin Elizabeth, is also pregnant. And she had was six months gone for her pregnancy. So Mary went to look for Elizabeth, all that for confirmation. And when she saluted Elizabeth, John the Baptist leaped in the womb. And the Bible said that John was filled with the Holy Ghost from in the womb. Now I want us to remember that as we go through this text, 
he had the Holy Ghost from he was in the womb. That's John the Baptist. All right, so here we have um, Mary and Elizabeth. Now we have John the Baptist. He is a priest also, come from the priest, the Levite tribe. Now, he came as the forerunner to the other way, prepare the way for Jesus to come. Now, Israel were looking for a king to come, knowing that David's son, according to the promise from God, that he would provide a son and for David to sit upon the throne of David and made it that an everlasting covenant. That is in 2 Samuel 7. So we know that David will have a son. We know it's not Solomon more, nor Nathan, nor, nor Absalom, nor Amnon, nor Adonijah, none of them. Uh, but there's a son David was going to have uh, to sit upon his throne. All right? So here we have now the time for uh, um, John the Baptist. Um, it was prophesied in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 40. And if, if you want to quickly look at Isaiah chapter 40, it tells us because the prophets book about John the Baptist coming. And Isaiah chapter 40, uh, you know, because you know that Isaiah book, the 66 chapters in Isaiah, and when you read the book of Isaiah, 66 chapters, well, there are 66 six books in the Bible. And Isaiah divided just like the Bible, you got the first 39 chapters, it refers to the Old Testament. And the last 27 refers to the New Testament. And so you have the 66 chapters. So when you read Isaiah, you're also looking at a miniature Bible uh, of 66 chapters, not 66 books. But chapter 39, Isaiah chapter 1 to 39 represents really the Old Testament. When you get to chapter 40 of Isaiah, it tells you now. God, remember now Jesus coming in the New Testament. So chapter 40 represents the coming of the New Testament. So if you look at chapter 40, verse 1, it says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, say your God. Speak ye comfortable to Jerusalem. Cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord hands double for all her trouble. Then he begins to say in verse 3, look at verse 3. He said, No, the voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, who, was, who made that statement? John he was referring to John the Baptist. Now, he was the one who's going to prepare the way of the Lord. So the prophet Isaiah prophesying here about one that was coming. Verse 3, let's read verse 3 again. He said, The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So we see there at the Old Testament, God was speaking about John the Baptist coming. Right? And that was the prophet Isaiah. When you read, you can read the whole chapter. So John the Baptist came, right? And he was just six months older than Jesus. Now, between Matthew chapter 1 and Malachi, the last chapter of the Old Testament, it was 400 years of silence. When there when they were no open vision, eh? no open vision, 400 years of silence, they didn't hear from God. Because if you look in Malachi, the very last word in Malachi is curse. Now the curse began in, in the Garden of Eden. And all through the Old Testament, the curse had never gone, never been gone. It was always there. So, so when you get to the very last verse of Malachi, you see the word curse. All right, so the curse had to be moved. But Jesus Christ is coming. He's the one who's coming to remove this curse. But before that happened, there was this silence of 
no open vision from God until after 400 years, then the promise of God had to come to fulfill. So to, to start up again, God uses John the Baptist to come to make the way for the people. So although there were the Sadducees and Pharisees and the Herodians, those people that was there, they didn't hear from God. They were just at their own, doing their own thing. But what they were, what they did was they still loved the, 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 the temple and have the synagogue and they have this and all kind of things. But they were not really hearing from God. So now it was time for God to do something. But the promise from Genesis 3.15 that the seed of the woman is coming to bruise the head of the serpent. That promise had to take place. And we know that the seed of the woman in St. Luke 8.11 Jesus himself spoke and said, the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So the seed in Genesis 3, 15 of the woman is the word of God. So remember then when the angel spoke to Mary and she said, how can this thing be since I know not a man? And when the angel told her that the Holy Ghost shall come upon her and the power of the highest shall overshadow her and she shall conceive in her womb. And bring forth a man child. You know what she said now about the word? Be it so unto me according to thy word. Once she said that and she accepted that it's going to happen to her angel left. And she was now pregnant with the word of God. So the word got down inside of Mary. And then Jesus was on his way. So as soon as that word begins to manifest in her, Divinity gets inside that word as well. And then she as Jesus took the time to come, nine months, and he came out. A God man child came out, but God was in that child. All right. So the 400 years of time have come now for the seed of the woman to be manifested. But the people's hearts need to be prepared. That's the same thing that like what we have to do when we have to preach the gospel and teach the doctrine to prepare men's hearts to go and to serve God. We don't just baptize somebody without saying anything. They got to hear the gospel. They are saved by the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So Jesus, giving his the commission to his apostles before he left, he said, go ye therefore, Teach all nations, in everybody, all nations, teaching them. When you teach them, you baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. By those three titles, it's one name, the name of Jesus. They're baptizing them, that's the gospel. The gospel is to baptize them. And then in verse 20, of Matthew 28, 20, he said, teaching them now to observe all things whatsoever I have taught you. Huh? But Jesus says, go and teach them. So you teach, you preach, you preach the gospel and we teach the doctrine. The doctrine is for the believer, the one that is being baptized. You have to teach them the way of God. We have the Lord Jesus. So here we have uh, the time has come. Now, John the Baptist was called as the forerunner one who would make the way clear. So he's got, some, he's got his own ministry to prepare the way for Jesus. So although he was only six months older than Jesus, his ministry began before Jesus as the forerunner. All right? So John the Baptist now baptizing because now his ministry began in the wilderness. Now, you notice that John the Baptist had not gone to Metropolitan Jerusalem, where the, where the synagogue and the temple was. He was preaching in the wilderness of God and the bushes because he was a man that was never exposed to Jerusalem because a lot of Rome had taken over Jerusalem and the very high priest that was in the temple of Jerusalem was put there by Rome. And so there were false, false priests. And so it is the king 
That was there when Jesus was born. Remember, Herod was on the top. And remember now when Jacob blessed Dude and said to him, the scepter shall not depart from Dude. Now the Lord give it from between his feet and his Shiloh bro. Shiloh is the prophetic name for Jesus. But when Jesus was born, a Gentile king was on the throne. That's why he had to go to Egypt. Eh? And I hope there for quite some time. And even when the angel told Joseph, take the young child and flee to Egypt and be there until the angel bring him words again. Now, after Herod the king died, his son, Archelaus, he took over. But then Jesus went into Nazareth, and that's where he grew up from that time into Nazareth. Well, let's get now into Matthew. And I spoke about the 30-year gap here, dispensation. We spoke about the baby, birth, and now he's 30-year-old. Now, John the Baptist now was full in his ministry. And in chapter 3 of St. Matthew, that in those days came John the Baptist, uh, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. He didn't go to the cities, but the power of God bring the people out of the cities into the bushes. And he was baptizing in the Jordan, River Jordan. Great River, River John, eh? preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And this, this was his message. His message is in verse 2. Repent ye for what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was his message, preaching the kingdom of heaven. But what was the kingdom of heaven had to do with John the Baptist Street? Because the promised king was coming, and the king is from heaven. So if you look at the word kingdom, and if you try to split them into two, you have king and you have dominion. King means authority and dominion, kingdom. Uh, he says, uh, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is Jesus. He's the king and he came from heaven, and he has got dominion and power. That's Jesus. So John the Baptist, making the way clear for everybody to know that he's coming. That they were all waiting for, for the consolation of Jesus Christ. They're looking for him to come. They're looking for the Messiah. Isaiah began to speak about the Messiah and all the way to the scriptures, Old Testament. Now the time of fulfillment. Jesus was now here. The forerunner was preaching about the kingdom of heaven. Is that at hand means he was writing. All right? No, he was related to John, who was cousin, but John was so busy with his ministry, they didn't go up together, right? Because remember now that Mary and Joseph grew up Jesus, and Mary also had other children. So in Jesus, in the house where he was living with Mary and Joseph, there was a, of half brothers, because remember that James, the bishop of Jerusalem, and, and also, um, and also James, and who is the other one now? Um, one before Revelation. Um, well, let me get the name. Let me get the name. Let me just let me get me here. You find that James and let me get the name for you. So we know what was what's the one before Revelation? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, um, Jude. Jude is the man I'm looking for. Now, so you have Jude and you have James. They were half brothers of Jesus. Right? So obviously, we are Mary and Joseph were living. Remember now, he was brought up in Nazareth, and that's where he grew. And if you look into the scriptures, um, in verse 23 of chapter 2 of Matthew. Verse 23 of chapter 2 of Matthew, he says, And he came and dwelt in the city of Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. So he grew up in Nazareth. Now it was time for him to be uh, begin his ministry. So the, the dispensation we're looking at is a, 
a 30 year gap from birth to baptism. So here we have Jesus now coming from Nazareth all the way down to Jordan where John was baptized. So when we begin again, let me look at the text again from chapter 3. It says, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of them is done. So he was preaching to the Jewish people and all those that came to his baptism, Sadducees and the Herodians and the Pharisees, everybody came to the baptism of John. I think it was in the sabbatical year, a time when uh, you know, uh, they were not working. Because remember, the, the, the God had, had told Moses that every seven years, they must allow the land to rest. They must not do no work. And that, 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 that was so sympathetical years was the year that they had to observe. So here was one of the time now, uh, the, the year of the Lord, John the Baptist was now preaching during that particular year. So nobody goes to work, everybody was available for the message that and they, and then they came to John to be baptized. They had to repent. He would not baptize them except they repent. He says, repent now for the kingdom of heaven. He said that Jesus was here. He says, for this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. We read that in Isaiah chapter 40. John said that this is he that was both talking about himself. The prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. We read that in Isaiah 40. Just so, here John the Baptist referring to himself as that man that Isaiah did spoke about in Isaiah 40, verse 3. The Bible now begins to tell us something about and the description because you have to know that it's him. And the same John and had his raiment of camels here and the leathern gurgle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. So while he was in the, in the, in the wilderness preaching, you know, he was not in the capital city where money and shekels were. So his food was very simple. He was eating locusts and wild honey. That's what he was being fed on, locusts and wild honey. And you know, I thought about that. You see, when you are free to preach the gospel, because John was a very rough preacher. John didn't mince word when he was preaching. He's preaching a repentance message. And you know why? He had not. He didn't have to depend on no offering, no, no ties to get anything to eat. The Lord provided for him in the wilderness, locusts and wild honey. That's what John, so he was free to speak. One of the things that sometimes can hold you back, depending on your circumstances. You know. But John was free to preach anything that the Spirit tell him to say uh, without any and any, any, any way of pulling back. He, he was a rough preacher. You know, when when um, the king, he went to the king, God, the king had stolen his brother's wife. And John went to the king. And John said to him, he did not even salute him because what the king did was wrong. But when John went to him, John tell him it's not lawful. No, he's telling the king, listen, it's not lawful for you to take your brother's wife. And although it was life-threatening, John knew that, but John was such a rough preacher. And they, they put him up and back him up in, in, in jail until he lost his head. But John was not afraid to preach. Eh? Because what he was not dependent on anyone to feed him, not to close him. No, it's very garment it was camel's hair. And the leather and gurgle. Okay. Now, and that's what he was wearing. Okay. His, his, his meat was locusts and wild honey. Now, verse 5 said, Then went out to him 
Jerusalem, all Jerusalem, people come to be baptized. This man baptizing in the, in the, in the bushes, the wilderness, but yet in the temple, where they had the synagogue, they had um, baptism pools in there with water to do what they want to do. But the power of God brought them into the wilderness where John was baptizing and they had to repent and confess their sins is he would not baptize them. So the Bible said uh, in, in verse 5, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan and were baptized of him in the Jordan confessing their sins. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't baptize them if they didn't confess their sins. You know, one of the things about repentance and confession is a blessing. You see, it aims to, 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 you to offload when things happen to us. Eh? We can confess and repent and turn. I think repentance is one of the most powerful words in the Bible. God, repentance is to forgive. God will forgive you if we truly repent and turn. But if we have to repent, we still have to turn. We can't say we repent and we won't turn. When you stop doing it, also turn. The Bible said in 2 Chronicles 7 14, if my people, which are called by my name, if they just humble themselves, seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from him. I will forgive their sin and will heal their life. And he says, his eyes will be opened unto them, and his ear will attend unto their prayer. So once we repent and confess before God, God is willing to forgive and give us deliverance. Always remember, thank God for the repentance um, thing that he gives us to do, to approach him and the mercy seat. At the mercy seat, once we go to the mercy seat, it means that we knew the suffering. So we're looking for mercy. All right? So, and were, they came to John and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sin. Verse 7. But now, John, while he was baptizing, the crowd was getting heavier. They were coming from everywhere. So in verse 7, he said, But when he saw many of the Pharisees, these were the top guys of the day, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, those were the men of the day who opposed Jesus. These were the men of the synagogue and rulers of the synagogue, Pharisees and, and Sadducees. Well, you know what? We had a preacher once, he was saying something about the Pharisees. He says, they are so far, you see. And they talk about the Sadducees. He said, they are Sadducees. Yeah? These men are just religious men. Pharisees and Sadducees. Proposes Jesus, proposes the message of salvation. So he said, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism okay, in the bush of the north. So they leave the synagogue, they leave the temple and their places of men they were in charge of, and they came into the wilderness confessing their sins. And so while they came to the baptism, John said unto them, whole generation of vipers. John called them vipers. You know, vipers are snakes. John says, oh, ye generation of vipers, with snakes. He says, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He says, who told you about the message I'm bringing? But they got all of the message, and they come to see for themselves, and they start to repent. And John was baptizing. He wouldn't baptize them except they repent. You know, so we don't baptize anyone except what? You have to repent. You mean the sorrow for your sins. Yeah. That's why Jesus went to Calvary and became the sin offering for us. So every man to be saved need to go to Calvary. Amen. Where Jesus died for us and where we paid the price, shed his blood and made the atonement, uh, procreation, uh, propitiation, that's the word I should use. Yes, so Jesus Christ is the one who paid the price to get us free from sin and shame and degradation. All right? So he says, oh, generation of vipers who has warned you to flee 
from the wrath to come. Who told you? Eh? So he said to them, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. So unless they repent, as they bring forth fruit, begin to show some sorrow of what you were doing that was wrong. Repent, confess, and he baptized them. Now one of the things about John baptism, he wasn't baptizing them for the removal of their sins. He was baptizing them that they should repent eh? because he was making the way for them. Remember now, that's what he was doing. We're going to talk more about that as we continue. So he said, bring forth therefore fruit, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Those stones that he mentioned was referring to the Gentiles that came. There were Gentiles and all that came. And baptism. And when Gentiles came, and that's why when you get to Paul, remember now in Acts chapter 19, and in Acts chapter 18, and in, but in Acts chapter 19, let me give it up. Paul was in Ephesus, Acts chapter 19, and when he, having passed through the upper coast, he came to Ephesus, and then he found there some disciples preaching. Paul found them preaching. And Paul listened to them, and Paul listened to them, and Paul said, uh, something wrong with the message. Because there was no anointing in what they were saying. So Paul waited until they were finished preaching. Paul said to them, by the way, gentlemen, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They turned to Paul and said, there were 12 of them. They turned to Paul and said, we have not heard of any Holy Ghost. Yet, that's all I to some of today's people. No, I'm the Holy Ghost and the preaching all over the place. So they said, we have not such as heard but that there was any Holy Ghost. Now, if a man had not heard of the Holy Ghost, the next thing you have to do is to question his baptism. Paul said to them, and to what then were you baptized? You hear what they say? They were baptized unto John's baptism. But so Paul said to them, but John didn't baptize in any name. No, he said, John preached the baptism of repentance. Yeah. That they would look to Jesus who would come. It's to prepare them looking for Jesus. We're ready for Jesus when Jesus would come. But these men of Ephesus, what happened? When they heard what Paul had said, they believed. And the Bible said they got baptized in Jesus' name. Remember, I know they were baptized unto John baptism. But now Paul spoke to them and showed them the way. They got baptized in 19, Acts chapter 19, verse 1. They were baptized in Jesus' name. And Paul laid his hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Now, what happened? These men, they came from the university in North Africa. Alexandria University. And in chapter 18 of the Acts, also you had Apollos. Apollos, so one of these men, came from the university, a university graduate, was a student, very bright. And the Bible said he could preach and he was, he was, he was instructed. By the way, the things of the Lord, he knew about the covenants, he knew about the feast, he knew about the tabernacle, you name it. When he come on to Apollos, Bible say he was mighty in the scripture, but he had no Holy Ghost because he was one of them who baptized unto John also from that, coming from North Africa. They passed through Jerusalem and John was preaching and they got baptized by John. So when Apollos was preaching with a massive congregation because he was charismatic too, but he was very bright. He had a way of using words. You know, words are captivating. You know, when a man can use the, the language, people will listen. That's why politicians are, they are. A politician will speak all day and tell you not. Huh? But here we have uh, 
Apollos preaching. But when Aquila and Priscilla, who didn't know the ghost people, went to listen to his preaching, they realized that there was something wrong with his message. So they invited him home. And the Bible said they expounded the word, word of God unto him more perfectly. And when Apollos listened, Apollos get baptized in Jesus' name. And he received the Holy Ghost. But he couldn't preach the message like he was preaching before. So he couldn't preach in the same place anymore. Because no, he was not preaching about Jesus. He was preaching Jesus. And he can mightily convince the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. So he didn't know that Jesus is the Christ because when they left Jerusalem to come to Ephesus, Jesus was not crucified yet. And John the Baptist was the only one that was preaching. So they baptized according to John baptism. So if you go back to the text here, and he said in verse, uh, let's read verse nine. And he said, think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So that John the Baptist was preaching to them. Huh? But when he was, he was preaching to them, it was not the message of salvation. It's to prepare them way, to prepare the way that when Jesus comes, they would accept him. And they would not turn away from him. So crowds came to his baptism waiting for Jesus to come. So then he warned the Jews about that because Abraham was what the Jewish people thought. If they have Abraham, Abraham could take them into heaven and take them out of hell. That's how they saw Abraham. Abraham was their father. So hear what John the Baptist said to them in verse 9. He said, and think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. That's what the Jewish man did. But I say unto you that God is able to raise up these stones eh, of children unto Abraham. He said, God is able to do The Gentiles are going to raise up to be the children of Abraham. Because anyone now that gets into the church also come under the umbrella of the seed of Abraham. So here we have. Uh, the preaching of John the Baptist and to the Jewish people. And verse 10, he said that no also the axe is laid unto the root of every tree. Now also the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down. Eh? And cast into the fire. So now the tree, he said the axe. You now when it's not about the axe, it's talking about the word of God. We're gonna cut them down. Because anyone who decides that Abraham is their father and not God, they're gonna get cut down. Because the, the, the tree with the root, the root is what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the root. But the axe is the word of God. And if they decided that Abraham is their father. The Bible said here, and it says in verse 10, now also the ox is laid at the root of the tree. Once the ox is laid at the root of the tree, meaning somebody going to get cut down, the root, the ox was there to chop down anyone that stands in the way of God, no matter who you are. They said that now also the ox is laid at the, we are at the root of the tree, Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn, is cut down, and cast away into the fire. All the good fight for burning. And that's what will happen. Okay. Any tree that bringeth forth not good fruit. But if you're not bearing good fruit, you're bearing the wrong kind of fruit. And the axe is the word of God. Were laid at the root of the tree. Not this stuff, but the root. That God was ready to cut the root down if they oppose it. And then not just cut it down, but cast it in the fire. Right? Judgment. So John then said, This is the way. So John said in person, 
praying me. John speaking here, John the Baptist speaking. He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Uh, not for removal of the sin here, unto repentance. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He's talking about Jesus now. I knew Jesus, he was the forerunner for Jesus, the king. So he said, he that is coming after him, after him, John the Baptist, is mightier than him. Let us read verse 11 again. He says, I indeed baptize you with what? Water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. But here, John is saying that he has the decrease. God, the one that is coming after him is mightier than him. And his very shoes, him, John the Baptist, is not worthy to lose. Because he will not baptize you with water. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So if you don't get the Holy Ghost, you get fire. Yeah, he's the one that will judge and he's the one that will put us away if we do not follow him. So John baptized with water unto repentance. So John was baptizing with water. So baptism has got to be done with water. Baptism. Now you have some people in the world today, so far as prophet, saying, um, just repeat the sinner prayer and you are saved. Repeat the sinner prayer and you are saved. Uh, some just say, well, you don't need to be baptized. Uh, but here we have John the Baptist baptizing people unto repentance. And now he tells us here that if you don't, the one that is coming will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Not just the Holy Ghost, and fire. And he says, he, and the Baptist saying, this one that is coming, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, the threshing floor, and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff which unquenchable fire. He can see judgment. Anyone does not accept the one that comes after John the Baptist. Quenchable fire. You know we're going to end up. Take a fire. Judgment. So here we have John preaching about Jesus coming. Now, the Bible said, after John told him all that, about the one that is coming. Then the crowd was there, massive crowd. John baptizing them, rough and make them repent, and John calling them vipers and everything. John told them that one is coming after him. He's the one that's going to baptize them with the Holy Ghost and fire. So you know that the water alone could get us to heaven. We need to get the Holy Ghost to get to heaven. Verse 13, then, then, come to Jesus from Galilee to Jordan and to John, what for? To be baptized of him. Now, this is it. Now, John, this, this preacher of righteousness, John baptizing people repenting, John calling them vipers. When John looked, he saw one man coming from Galilee. Then come at Jesus from Galilee to Jordan and to John to be baptized of him. But John raised an objection. Immediately John said, I have need to be baptized of thee. And come as thou to me. John objects and asks my question. In other words, 
I can't baptize you because you don't have no sin to repent. You know, you don't have no confession to make. So John said, I can't baptize you, man. But you see, and John was in charge of the baptism. You know? But when Jesus came, you now Jesus overruled him to show authority. Right? So he said, he said, but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou unto me. Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered it. Now Jesus now had to be baptized. But Jesus had no sin. Right? So Jesus' demonstration of baptism is to teach us how we need to die and bury it. Because baptism is a burial. Now we, the entire generation of this earth, is class of the seed of man. The blood of Adam runs in every man's way. Everyone that is born on this planet is born dead, except Jesus. Jesus didn't come from the seed of Adam. Jesus the seed came from heaven because the entire world is being contaminated, poisoned. I gotta say they have been, been, been blood poisoned because of what Adam did, and we are his descendants. So we born with the same nature of Adam, a sinful nature. Death is attached to us. It's dead men walking, all of us. When you read in Ephesians chapter 2, he said that you are the equipment who were dead in trespasses and sin. Uh, only God can forgive sin and we trespass against one another. We have to forgive one another. But now we have Jesus to be baptized. John refused it. Jesus overruled him and said, suffer it to be so now. John had to obey him. You know, Jesus is God and you have to obey him. Right? Uh, then John suffered him. Now where Jesus was baptizing? He was baptizing in a place called John the Baptist was baptized in a place called Betabara. When you read in John Apostle, John, he made John the Apostle, in his writing, he writes also about John the Baptist. Uh, so it's another reading you can have there in John the Apostle about John the Baptist and Jesus, where he was baptized. But I just want to bring this uh, thing to our understanding that when the Jordan was crossed, remember now when Israel came out of Egypt, when they killed the lamb, the sacrifice, the, the great emancipation from Egypt, and the tenth day of the first one, each house had to get a lamb. And the lamb that they received, take it from the sheep or the goat, but they had to kill the lamb and put the blood of the lamb and the lintel on the two side posts of the door. And they should roast the lamb and eat it with bitter herbs and unleavened bread because the destroying angel was going to pass through Egypt that night. And anywhere he didn't see the blood, somebody would die in that house. So he said, he said, the angel so not to lock away himself. And the destroying angel came down that night and passed through Egypt. And any one of the houses that had the blood of the lamb, Yet couldn't go near it. And you know, if, if a lamb's blood was so powerful that death couldn't go near it, you imagine the blood of Jesus Christ. Eh? No death can come near us. Death is afraid of us because of the blood. You know, it's that the blood, we have been washed in Jesus' blood. Eh? The blood is in our, in our hearts, we have that blood. 
So G, so when they, when when they destroyed the destroying came down, and the Lord said to Moses, When I see the blood, I will pass. That's where the pass home comes from. So the children of Israel now look what happened. They had to come to the Red Sea. The Red Sea crossing is a type of their baptism. Coming out of Egypt is a type of the world. Egypt was a the type of the world, every kind of a thing going on in Egypt. The people coming from meeting need to be cleansed. So now the blood was shed. The, lamb, the blood was at the LinkedIn of the book of books. But they had to be washed because if the blood is shed and you're coming out from it the world, you have to be baptized. So they had to come to the Red Sea. All of the three million of them had to come to the Red Sea. When they got to the Red Sea, they got to the other side, you know, Miriam and Moses leading the men, singing and Miriam and they had Kimbrel, and they sing the songs of victory. They got over to the other side. So they came through the, through the Red Sea and a type of their baptism. All right? So on their way to the wilderness now, they have another crossing to do. So this time now, the tabernacle was built, and they had to cross the Jordan to get into the promised land. So now they had the Ark of the Covenant. The priest, Levite priest, was carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Now for the people to cross the Jordan, because it was harvest time and the Jordan was very heavy. The river had come down so, so strong, but the priest now had to go to the Jordan River. And the priest carrying the ark, as soon as the priest's feet touches the water, the Jordan rolled back and there was a way made for the people to go through. Huh? And the Jordan, the Jordan, they went across on dry land, three million of them, except for two tribes who decided that they'd like to stay on the other side because the other grass was there. But now you find out that the second baptism type was the crossing of the Jordan. Now, when the priests stood in the Jordan, okay, that was the Levite priest, same as we done, but this came from, from that tribe. They stood in the middle of the Jordan River and the people crossed over. That's what said unto them. Take 12 stones from where the priest stood, 12 stones. And put it over the side of the promised land. That when the children ask, What mean at these so stones? Then you can tell them this is the time when your forefathers had crossed coming from Egypt and that crossed the Jordan to get into the promised land. Then after they took the 12 stones from the feet of where the priest stood, he also told them to take 12 stones. When you read it, go to Joshua, you can see it. Take 12 stones and put the 12 stone at the feet of where the priest stood. So the 12 stones were put at where the priest stood. So everybody went across. Joshua called them out of the water and the Jordan flows. And them 12 stones that were put back where it was, it's there as a memorial in the water. All right. So now, Jesus came and John the Baptist, the Levite priest, baptizing in the Jordan. Where you think John was standing up? Same place where they put them stones in the river Jordan. John the Baptist stood there and Jesus came to be baptized. That was a marked place, a memorial spot in the Jordan. And that's where Israel crossed to get into the promised land. So the priests, Levite priests had to stand with the heart of the covenant and all Israel went across into the promised land. Jesus came and Jesus himself had got to be baptized by Jesus. Now, like I said, he was baptized and he had no sin. 
no sin, he was sinless, but he had to demonstrate how we need to die. Right? So we need to die because we're already spiritually dead. We're spiritually dead. So we need to be buried. So Jesus' demonstration in the water, he puts the water in the world, and Jesus now came, and when he stepped down into the river, when Jesus stepped down into the river, it was symbolic of his death. When John covered him up under the water, it's symbolic of his burial. When John lifted him up out of the water, it's symbolic of his resurrection. Now, he's teaching us how we know to get back to him, we have to die and be buried. Spiritual death. So now for the believer to be saved, I want you to know that Jesus is still in the water. Now the water is in the world. And for we to be saved, we have to be baptized. So we demonstrate the same thing that Jesus does. And we, when we go to the baptism pool, or to the river, or to the sea, when we step down into that water, we see because that baptism pool is a grave. Six foot. I see I just got water in there. So we get you into the baptism pool. And we, when you step down into the pool, it's symbolic of your death. When we call upon the water and baptism, it's symbolic of your burial. So when we lift you up out of the water, it's symbolic of your resurrection. What you have done there, you, you serve a summons to, to hell. Then no grave will hold your body down. So you rise now to walk in newness of life. So now Jesus now, when he was baptized, is to demonstrate to us what we need to do. Because we can, we can get somebody to shoot us and kill us, to put us in the baptism pool. Because we can die physically because the Lord wants us. A spiritual death is that we have to demonstrate that. Now, the Bible tells us that there are three that be a witness upon the earth. The water, the spirit, and the blood. Three. Uh, three that bear testify witness upon the earth. So when we are to be saved, we have to go to Calvary. And our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ and what he done for us. We need to be baptized. Once we accept Jesus, we need to bury the old man. Bury him. Our old attitude and our ways and our bad ways, whatever we have, we've got to be buried. So once we get to the pool by faith, because faith without works is dead. So once we believe, and you, you, you speak to the world today, and you said, to 90% of them, do you believe in God? And they say, yes, they do. But to believe in God is an action word. Believe is an action word. To believe in God, we have to do something with our belief. We can say we believe and fold our arms and do nothing. No. When I believe, I have to go and get myself baptized as my works. To believe in Jesus Christ. So what we have is the water and the spirit. The spirit is in Jesus. He's the spirit. He that bear is it's a fire, it's upon the earth, the water, the spirit, and the blood. The blood came from his side. Now, when Jesus was on the cross, a soldier took a spear and pierced his side. How it came from his side is blood and water. Right? From his side, because that's where the church came up from, Jesus' side. But the church is the bride of Christ. So the spirit is Jesus. And I'm, I'm speaking from First uh, uh, John chapter five. First uh, John, no, First John five verse seven. First John five verse seven. Now, the water comes from his side. So when this soldier pierced his side, all came from his side is blood and water. So the blood and water. So we have the born of water, the spirit, and the blood. The spirit is Jesus Christ. 
He's the one on the cross who shed his blood. The water is in the world. And the name um, is in the is in the, is in the world. So the, so the water, the spirit, and the blood, right? That's what formed this church. Now, when Adam was in the garden and he needed a bride, what the Lord Jesus, what the Lord God did, the Lord God did, put him into a deep sleep. And when Adam went into a deep sleep, uh, the Lord opened his side and took a rib from his side and made him his bride and brought his bride back to him. And when Adam saw his bride, he said, no, this is bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. So Jesus bride, the church, come from his side. Adam bride came from his side. So Jesus Christ uh, is the last Adam. And his church, the bride of Christ, came from his side. So he took the sword. Remember now he was on the cross and out of his side came blood and water. That's what formed the church and the bride of Christ. From Jesus. Uh, the blood came from his side. So Jesus now, you and I, belongs to him. We've been born again. New birth, new covenant. By faith, we accept. Then we, have, we became justified. The okay. Bible says, therefore, being justified by faith, we are peace with God. The act of justification, meaning that we were guilty, guilty, condemned to die. But Jesus came and paid the price for us. He said his blood came from his side, blood and water. So when we baptize the believer, Jesus meets him under that bottle and circumcise your heart. And we lift your boat up the water and you rise to walk in newness of life. So what we need now is a spirit to sanctify us, to set us apart for Jesus Christ, use, use and purpose. So justification by faith, we get baptized, then we get the, and then we are, we get the, the spirit to sanctify us. And then the Holy Ghost, we have the Holy Ghost. We grow up that we also us to heaven. But the three different phases is justification, sanctification, and glorification. So we know two things have happened to us. We have been justified and we have been sanctified. We are now waiting to be glorified. We can glorify, be glorified until we get our new body. Uh, that uh, celestial body that we waiting for. Now, this one that we have came from the dust of the earth. And when the Lord told Adam, God told Adam, he says, dust the heart and dust shall thou return. Because he made man from the dust of the earth. But what God breathed into man is the breath of life that didn't come from the earth. That came from God himself. So we know, we know are born again of the water, the spirit, and the blood. So we're under a new covenant, a new birth. So this is where we are. Now, so Jesus in verse 15 said, answering said unto them, summary to me so now, for thus it becomes to fulfill all righteousness. That's what he said to John. Then John, John the Baptist, he summoned him. Did what Jesus said. Verse 16. And Jesus now, and he was baptized. Now he was plunged under the water. The Greek word for bap, bap, baptizing means uh, baptismo. It means to plunge backward. So we have to bury you. It's a burial under the water. Not sprinkling. And we can baptize you to believe. You have to believe to be baptized. Jesus, when he was baptized, he went up straight away out of the water. So he, he, he demonstrated resurrection straight away because resurrection reality was coming. After Jesus, he went to Calvary and he died physically. But you and I can't die physically. So the water, spiritually death, 
first spiritual burial. That's what happened to us in the water. When we are buried, and then your heart been circumcised, Jesus meets you under the water, you rise to walk in newness of life. Because he needs us for the gospel. But we need to preach the gospel. Yeah? But we have to be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, and rise to walk in newness of life as we can preach the gospel. If you are baptized in the water only, and you have not received the Holy Ghost, you cannot be because you need the Holy Ghost eh, for you to get on with your ministry. But without the Holy Ghost, what will happen? You'll be using self, your own self righteousness to do the things of God. And it must be done by the Spirit of God. So Jesus, now, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And I want us to look this. Let me go read this, this through. And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighted upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, I want us to look at this manifestation here. Jesus now was baptized. Verse 16. Let's let us. So we can glean in this 16 verse. And Jesus, when he was baptized, he went up straightway out of the water. Came out of the water. And the Bible said, and lo, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. Heavens open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God. Who saw it? Not Jesus, John the Baptist. He says, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighted upon him. Because at this baptism was where Jesus was inaugurated. Because remember, the crowd was there. All Israel, Sadducee, Pharisee, everybody came to the baptism. Jesus was now introduced to Israel as the Messiah. Right? So look what happened. We read verse 16 again. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And lo, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting up on him. Who saw the Spirit? John saw the Spirit. John. The Baptist saw the Spirit. And now, verse 17 says, And lo, a voice from heaven said, And there was, a, there was a noise, a voice came from him. Now, it's out of the mouth of two and three witnesses. You're going to establish that this is the truth. That you need to have witnesses. At Jesus' inauguration is baptism. Let's see the witnesses that was there and how it worked. Straight away, he came out of the water and lo, heavens opened unto him. So he's anointing. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Now, John the baptizer. If you go over to, to, to the, the Gospel of John, John tells you. That he who sent me to baptize said unto me, Whom to ever I see, the Spirit descend upon. He is the one that must be introduced to Israel. Because he is the one that has come. He is the one that they've been waiting for. Yeah. So when you read into John, you find that the same thing will happen on here. John also. Write about it in the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Read that sometime. So here we have the witnesses. Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit descending up like a dove, lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying. So the, the, the crowd heard the voice. But the crowd did not see the spirit. Because God is a spirit, you can't see him. But John, who was influenced by the spirit, 
saw what happened. One scripture said, it descend upon him like a dove. The spirit was like a dove. So, this is, this, this, so what happened? The three things to witness. The voice they heard. Lo, a voice from heaven, verse 17, saying, and what the voice said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. So this is, the, the, this is for the crowd. The crowd heard the voice. Eh? John saw the spirit. And the heavens open. So the witnesses is that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And he'd been witnessed by the crowd. They heard the voice. And you know, there was uh, sometimes you hear some say, well, you know, there's only um, one God, or some say two God, but Jesus Christ is God. In St. In St. John chapter 3. Jesus said, he said, no man has ascended into heaven, save he that cometh down from heaven. Even the Son of God, he said, is in heaven. So while he was on earth, he is the same God in heaven. This time he made himself visible by wearing a human suit as God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Now, some don't believe, say, well, who can God be in heaven and his voice down here? I remember a bishop said that he was watching something on the TV and speaking to somebody. And he said, oh, what? From America. And he was here in his house. And he said that a dog was barking in America. And he was in his house here, hearing the dog barking from America. And he said, if a dog can bark from America, and it's there in England and can hear it, how come say some come and say, God can't speak from heaven, and you hear it? Who is God can speak, and everybody can hear it at the same time? God can say one word, and everybody can hear it. But if a dog can bark in America, you stay here in England and hear it. Much more God himself. So the voice was for the people. And, it, and the voice said, this is my beloved son. You notice it says, in whom, not with whom, but in whom, I, in whom I am well pleased. You see, sometimes you read the scripture and some people say, well, this is my beloved son, with whom? It didn't say with whom. It says, in whom. Because God was in Christ, he was in that body, reconciling the world unto himself. So now we have Jesus baptized, witness. When we take it to the baptism, the baptized, we have witnesses around. The baptizer would ask the believer certain questions that they answer. And they would know, and if they don't answer the right questions, then you can baptize them. Have to know what the right things are. I don't know that there's only one God. They got to have one belief, huh? one, one faith, one baptism. They have to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God, they're about to be buried. And whosoever who finds you, who's under the water, Jesus waiting for you under the water to be baptized and your heart being circumcised. All of us that are baptized, baptized, then we walk in newness of life. Jesus went to Calvary, and he then got crucified. When he got crucified, he was taken down, and he was buried. Put in Joseph of Amathias tomb, and he was in there for three days and three nights, and he came out resurrected. Resurrected, came out. Amen. Jesus came out after three days. And Jesus spent 40 days on this planet showing himself by infallible proofs that he is the one. They saw the wound in his hand, they saw the scars, they saw everything. And you know, 
the body that Jesus had when he rose from the dead. He could walk through walls without damaging the walls. But while the apostle was hiding in the upper room, Jesus just came and stood him amongst them. They thought that they had seen a spirit. And Jesus said to say, we have good cheer. He said, this is high. It is high. He said, a spirit don't have a flesh and blood. It's not it's a feeling. Because he had no blood in his body. Because all of Jesus' blood was drained out of Calvary. So he gone back to him. You know, the blood, the blood is still down here. But the blood is to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us and wash us. Jesus gone back to him. He leave the blood, but he just ascended and gone up. We have a body like that, and that's what's going to happen. Have happened to us. Now Jesus carried the cross. And because he did that, we too must understand that we carry a cross spiritual. God Jesus himself said, if you dare to come after me, whosoever come after me, let him first deny himself. Take up the cross and follow him. So we all have a cross to be. But the cross that we bear is light affliction. The thing that we go through and the thing that we suffer tells us that the suffering of this present, present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. And if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. So as Jesus Christ was baptized, demonstrating for us all we need to be, all we need to die, and thank God, God, because baptism is a must. Baptism is a barrier. To bury the old man and rise to walk in newness of life. If you are not baptized in Jesus' name, and remember, it has to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the name. If you don't use the name, your sin still remains. Some only use the title. God got about a thousand titles in the Bible. But he only got one name. The name is Jesus. Some are saying if you don't use baptizing or Jesus Christ. No, you're, you're, you're not baptized. No. I was saying, go in there for a teach our nation and baptize them. Yeah. And he give you the title, but each title had the same name. The father name is Jesus, Jesus says, I am come in my father's name. Jesus says, I am come in my father's name. You see, Jesus said, if you see me, you see the father. He told him, guys, he said, John 14. Okay. He says, show the father that is suffice. Jesus says, so long time I'm with you, you don't know me. Jesus said, if you see me, you see the, so the, you see the, the son and the father, you see him one person. Just like all the lion and the lamb. Because when Jesus was baptized and walked the following day, John said to the apostles that he had, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Yet John was preaching about uh, the kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of him is around. But, but, but it was not a wrong message. What is not put them in the order in this nation? God, the lion and the lamb is the same one God. But then the lamb, the lamb had to be slain first. Then you, you can't have kingdom before cross. The cross has become first. Then we have the kingdom after. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's also the spotless lamb of God. And this is where they misread the prophets. Misread. What would the prophet say? The people misread. And they want the kingdom right away. And Jesus said, no, that's not the way. You can't get the kingdom before the cross. You get the cross first, and after that is the kingdom. But thank God that we are baptized in Jesus' name. We receive the Holy Ghost, conscious of that. We need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. God bless you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. So nice to have your... Uh, a lot, of, a lot of people so 
I mean, we're still busy um, after the, the, the holidays, you know, and uh, they the, the, are maybe gone away uh, for holiday with families and things and so on. But thank God we are here. And the word of God still goes on. Amen. And we continue to teach, to live, and to testify, to evangelize. Amen. We continue to do the work that Jesus wants us to work, wants us to do. God bless you in the name of Jesus so we can see you tonight. Amen. We have Brother Kim Blake. It's so good to see you, sir, again. Amen. And we have. Um, we have Sam and Ronnie, God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have uh, Brother Watts and Sister Marcia Watts. We have Sister Cynthia Gardner, God bless you. In the name of Jesus, Bob Webb and uh, Monica uh, Gray, Marilyn, God bless you. We have Pastor Donovan Mares, God bless you, sir. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, Brother Fabian and Sister Yvonne. Amen. And we have oh, an uh, evangelist with us. Amen. Oh, the missionary faith doctor with us. Amen. And we have here, my God is bigger than any problem I face. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And let us just pray. Baptism in Jesus' name. Thank God that He made a way for us. He lift the curse, bury the demon. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we honor you and we praise you. Thank you for your goodness, your loving kindness to us. Thank you for your greatness. Thank you for your gift that you have given unto us. Lord Jesus, we appreciate and we worship and adore you. Read upon us right now, dear Savior. Oh God Almighty, and this oh, 90 minutes, dear God, that you have given unto us, that we can seek after you. Oh Lord, that the word of God is given for us for our learning. And we thank you by the power in the word of God. Bless us now, strengthen us, and keep us. Heal our bodies. My God, save our soul. Lord Jesus, looking towards your coming again. In the name of Jesus Christ, go belong now. Signs of the times are everywhere. And help us to be fully prepared and ready. Rapture ready. God, we thank you. Bless us now. We will be working to your hands. Keep us, Lord. Up, up, and it's your will that we should be together on Sunday morning. God, we do pray. And on Saturday night, Sunday morning, we do pray you keep us until then. We give thanks right now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And now may the abiding grace of the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and our Father, faithful fellowship, communion of the Holy Ghost to come, and the rest remain in the life of the soul until Jesus come again. God, we say thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory.